Well, Melissa, this is a fantastic moment for for all of us. Uh, it is. I mean, I. Uh, when are you gonna have the baby? We are scheduled for a week from yesterday, so six, six more days. Six more days, and you look really ripe. I am very ripe. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just remember how many years ago was it that you were sitting here at this table? and uh, so optimistic about your Hodgkin's. I remember you said Hodgkin's disease, very curable. Very curable. Um, I have relapsed since, but with advances in medicine again, I'm in, been in remission for five years. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, we've had a lot of patients like that. They, mm -hmm. they, they wanted to relapse, but then they were finally cured the second time. Yes, yeah. yes. Right. Yeah. There was that first patient even that the first overfreeze we did was 1996 or seven, and uh, she um, uh, has she her ovaries her frozen ovaries still working. She's had two babies already, incredible. and um, but and that's from 1997, and uh, so I can say this because I mean she <laughs> went public on all this, and uh, she uh, um, is a oncology nurse at Children's Hospital, wonderful. and uh, I. Uh, uh, rem I rem remember it very, very well that she went through uh, several relapses and mm -hmm. now she's fantastic and, mm -hmm. and there's no trace of anything. So That's great. But I remember you said you were so optimistic, you said very curable, but then I read about fertility. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, no one tells you about the fertility part. They just want to treat you, cure you, and move you on with life, but you don't realize that when you go through as much chemotherapy as I had to endure, it puts you in the menopause. And and nobody really told you that you had to read about that. They give you a lot of books to read, a lot of okay. pamphlets. Okay. <laughs> but then no, that is not on the top of their list by any means when it comes to helping, you know, save a life. Yeah, well because uh, yeah, well they, they they want to save a life, they don't think about the fertility no. usually. It's nope. up to you. And so how did you wind up coming here even? Um, a friend introduced me to Dr. DeRosa as an mm -hmm. OBGYN, and that's how I got and to you. And that's how you found out. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> and your oncologist wasn't too unhappy when they found out about it? No. Well, they she, were okay. Go ahead and do she, it. She wasn't upset by any means. She's, she will not let me come to appointments now without bringing, bringing the baby. <laughs> Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really great. Oh, that's good. She's so excited. But I remember you saying something, and I do quote you, uh, if I'm correct, I want to make sure I'm quoting you correctly, um, that uh, in a way, you're really glad that you had cancer, because otherwise you wouldn't have preserved your fertility. Yeah, I wouldn't, absolutely. I mean, how, how old were you when, you when we first saw you? 21. I was 21 years old when you took out the ovary, and I am 34 now. Wow. Mm -hmm. 13 years later, you're going to have the baby. Yep. And we still have plenty of good quality ovary left. I mean, there's, a, yeah, plenty in there. <laughs> uh, and and they're, they're, they're not going to have a shelf life, so uh, if your husband could tolerate this, you could come back uh, whenever. This is going to keep functioning for a while. Mm -hmm. But let's say it stops functioning in five years. Mm hmm. You know, and you're 39, you could come back and put another piece of ovary put back. Let's do it again. And do it again, right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make a basketball team. <laughs> so uh, you're going to have a C-section, is that right? I am. She's measuring just a little large. So Dr. Well, DeRosa would rather do it the safe way. Be safe, yeah. I, uh, I don't want to be offensive, but no. you, you do look uh -huh. big. Yeah, she's and you haven't gained weight. I see that. You look you look fine. Um, thank you. I I, f I haven't gained much. I have been pretty healthy this pregnancy, but she is uh, taking it all in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's cool. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So, um, you know that when once you deliver, the ovary is going to keep on functioning. And mm -hmm. so, uh, are you going to nurse or? Uh, Yes. Okay. Fully so, plan to. so whenever you stop nursing, 
uh, don't be shocked, but your periods will come back. Mm -hmm. I suspect this ovary will last. This piece, this little piece of ovarian tissue is going to last a long time. The little, the little piece that you quilted. Yeah, yeah that we quilt. Oh, you know what? The quilting. I yeah. remember you quilting. <laughs> yeah. Any advice for either um, young cancer patients uh, or or for just women who are worried about their biologic clock? Well, I think the word, if it's not out there now, needs to be out there for women who are young. Diagnose. I mean, my type of cancer, Hodgkin's lymphoma, usually affects women late teens, early 20s. Fertility is the last thing on your mind when you're in high school, college, maybe just starting a career. So if the information's out there, if they are diagnosed, then they need to come to you. They need to come to someone because they need to have this. Yep, and, they, and most of them, most frankly, of the young cancer patients who can have this done um, don't know about it or they're afraid uh, or they're concerned about the finances and uh, so... Oh yeah, there's yeah. A, lot of, a lot of reasons yeah. why you would be hesitant. You just held your abdomen. Is there a little kick going on? Oh, there? yeah. You want to feel her? She's. Oh wait. She. No. Uh, yeah. Okay. She's, she's got the hiccups. <laughs> there it is. Wow, that's fantastic. You feel it? Oh, that's it's. Oh, oh my God, that was a real strong one. There's uh -huh. another strong one. Yeah. She, awesome. She's she's gonna be a tough girl. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, then. All right. Great. It's great to see you again. It's good seeing you. Thank you. Thank you.